There are many shows out there which seem to be forgotten as the years go by. It's really just the rare few that are still talked about for years to come. Everyone has heard of shows like Attack on Titan, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach. But there are countless others which even big anime fans will likely never heard of. There's a good reason for this too. Maybe these shows are very mediocre at best and really just don't do anything worth remembering. But even so, there are a few undiscovered gems out there. Those that no one talks about, no one has heard of, but they still tell an amazing story, one worth watching. About a month ago, the Anime HQ released a video discussing what he believed to be the top five underrated anime. And at the top of the list was Shion no O. Anyway, I'm a person who likes to watch obscure things, so I thought I would check it out. This show is certainly obscure, but does it deserve more attention than it gets, or is it one of those that just should be forgotten? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. Today on Raising Sun Reviews, Shion no O. There are two main parts to the story of Shion no O. The first is a plot about a young girl who plays Shogi. Shogi, for those who do not know, is a game played primarily in Japan. It shares a lot of similarities with chess, but a couple new rules added to make it a little bit more complicated. And if you understand the basics of chess, you should be able to follow along with the show. What I did coming into this show was to read the article on Wikipedia about Shogi. This gave me a good enough understanding of the game to be able to follow along with the show, even if I couldn't pick up on quite everything. Anyway, this part of the show feels very much like a sports anime. We see our main character Shion play Shogi against various people, she makes friends, she makes enemies, and she pursues her dream of becoming a great Shogi player. The second part of the story, which is in my opinion the more interesting part, is a murder mystery. When Shion was five years old, she witnessed her parents murdered right in front of her eyes. And then the murderer did the unthinkable. He played a game of Shogi against young Shion. Obviously, this leaves Shion quite emotionally traumatized, so much so that she is unable to speak. And she has also blocked out many of the memories from that night. She's adopted by the family next door. Her adoptive father is a great Shogi player and ends up teaching Shion how to play Shogi. The interesting thing about this plot is seeing how these two different storylines come together. We slowly get hints about who's responsible for the murder and why as the Shogi matches go on. Sometimes through the matches themselves, sometimes through the other players. I'd say this is one of the greatest strengths of the show. It builds up to the climax on both ends of the story, a great uh, tournament, along with uh, finding out who the murderer really is. There are a number of twists and turns throughout the story, and I was surprised that when we finally learned who the murderer was. I really have to compliment the show for how well the Shogi matches were done. There's one Shogi match that takes place over three episodes, and while I would normally say this is way too long for a single Shogi match, it ended up working, partly because they shifted to the other part of the story at some points, but really, the matches are really intense, and you really wanted to see Shion win. But, of course, no story is without its flaws. The anime does have a very intricate plot, but at the same time, it just jumps around too much, and there are things that weren't explained that you were supposed to pick up on. There are a couple times where I ended up going back to previous episodes saying, okay, did I miss anything, or what's going on here? And this left me confused. There are also some cases where the plot contradicts itself. I don't want to go into too many details, but these plot holes do hurt the show. There are also a few cases where the information is conveyed through very convenient coincidences, like a character just happens to be in the right location at the right time with the right people to get the information they need to move the plot forward. Still, all the intensity of the show and the surprises throughout it, this kept me hooked. I was really excited as I got to the end here. So yeah, a good plot overall. The characters of Shion know all, I believe, are the best part of the show. Our main character, Shion, is a young 13-year-old girl. She ends up being someone who I really wanted to root for throughout the show. Her skill in Shogi is exceptional, especially for her young age. Beyond this though, it's a kindness that really stands out. She's a very quiet girl, but at the same time she really wants to help others. And her gentle persona really makes it so she can connect with people. She can't speak, but this doesn't stop her from expressing herself. She carries around a sketch pad with her most places, and she's able to write on there what she needs to. And the show also does a really good job of showing her facial expressions when she gets excited, finds something funny, or so on. And there are still some other times where we're reminded she's a kid. She likes sweets, she doesn't like broccoli. And this really makes her more human. She's really traumatized by the murder still and was to overcome it, but has trouble doing so. And it's her fight through this, her fight through her fears, that really make her story a great one. There are a number of side characters I could get into, but I don't really have a time here. As a whole, though, they really add to the show. Each one has their different personalities, their different strengths, and the different problems they're trying to overcome. What really stands out to me is how many of the characters are somewhere between good and evil. Sometimes it's the good guys who, in fact, are the most evil. And sometimes it's the villains who end up coming through in the time of need. 
and I don't see this that often, so when I do, it's really appreciated. I can't see any major flaws with the characters, which is really rare. I guess I had to complain at all, it would just be that there isn't any character that really stands out above the rest, but it really didn't need it. Xion worked as a main character, all the others worked as the supporting characters, and I really enjoyed getting to know them. Moving on to animation sound, the animation of the show was okay. I can't really call it exceptional, but it was decent most of the time. The show as a whole didn't really need that creative animation since there weren't any really battles or anything like that. So what it had was satisfactory. There were a couple times when the animation did slip up a little bit, but it was nothing that bad. Moving on to the soundtrack, it was easily overlooked most of the time. There were a couple of tracks that stood out, especially during the more intense shogi matches, which made those scenes even better. Beyond this though, there isn't anything in the soundtrack to really stand out. The opening and endings though, those were both quite good. I especially enjoyed the opening because it was able to show the intensity of the murder, the trauma that Xion went through, along with introducing the characters, and in some ways foreshadowing some of the key events throughout the show. When the last couple episodes were playing, I was looking at the opening trying to figure out, wait, could they be pointing to something? What are they saying here? I think they even revealed the identity of the murderer through the opening, but unless you really knew what to look for, you'd miss it. Overall though, Shion no is very, very underrated, I would say. It's not a show that I would consider one of the greatest of all time, but it does a number of things right and was really an enjoyable experience. I really like seeing all the pieces come together, especially as I marathoned those past like 10 episodes on that last day. That was fun. The plot twists were quite surprising, and even with the plot holes, these weren't a huge issue. With all that being said, I've captured scores for the categories of story, characters, animation sound, and my own personal enjoyment. Story receives a score of a 6.8 for an overall solid story, brought down by a few things not fully explained. Characters receive a score of an 8.6 for a very strong cast. Animation Sound receives a score of 6.5 for decent animation for the most part and a great opening. And lastly, Enjoyment receives a score of an 8.1 for being an overall enjoyable show, especially as we got toward the end. Taking the average of all these together gives Xion you know, No oh, a overall score of a 7.5 with the recommendation to go watch it. Even if you're not a fan of Shogi, the show is still really enjoyable. Unfortunately, there is not a legal place that I know of to watch this show. This show is unlicensed and as such is not available for purchase or legal streaming. So you have to rely on the fan subs, which I don't really recommend, but there isn't really another choice here. If you have any other anime suggestions for me to watch and or review, please go ahead and leave them. I know there are a few others I haven't gotten to yet, but we'll get to those eventually. <laughs> At least for the most part. No promises about One Piece. Anyway, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.